chapter 39, Genesis, the 39th chapter. We're going to continue our series on detours. As a matter of fact, today I want to help you with a thought in how to know detours are from God. How do you know if the detour you're on is from God? Very important for you to take notes today. Remember that detours are distractions from the original intended route that we had planned to take. Amen. We plan to go one way, but a detour popped up. And if you have never seen these signs before, you have never driven a car. Amen. Particularly in this area, because you're always going to see now because of construction, because of a, an accident, because of a, a change of uh, uh, something down the road, you'll get a detour, and it always goes a little bit further. Detours are typically unexpected. They're inconvenient, and as such, it takes us longer than we had planned to get to our final destination. Straight line is simple. Anybody can run that straight line. Amen. But to have a detour, it affects us, and I learned a few weeks ago to learn how to enjoy a detour. Amen. To quit griping about it, complaining about the car going slower in front of you or the one that wants to bump you behind you. You just got to get on through it. Can I get an amen? Are you comfortable? Genesis chapter 39, amen, verse 19. Detours take comfort away. Has anybody noticed that? Amen. It takes your comfort away. Genesis 39, verse 19. Let me mention this because I feel the Spirit unctioning me too. Uh, those of you, you've already uh, have heard that uh, Sister Lori, my wife, has cancer and has been going through treatment since October, and we had hopes Thursday to ring the bell. That was our hope, you know, and it didn't happen because some have asked me and uh, we got to take one more round of chemo and, uh, but she's been coming to the North campus. It's good to have her there. And so continue to just keep praying for her. I don't want to make life about me or mine. Amen. But I just want to mention it to you because I know you are concerned, you care, and I appreciate your care. And so does she. Uh, so again, we're not social media in it. I don't, I don't feel the need for it. Uh, you do you, we'll do us. Amen. Amen. Genesis 39, verse 19. When his master heard the story, this is Joseph. You remember Joseph was, he had a dream, and from the dream, this is from last week, he told his brothers, he told his mom and dad, moon and stars, and all the sheaves are going to bow down to me. They got frustrated with him. There was an arrogance about a 17-year-old boy making a statement, and they threw him into a pit. A boy by the name of Judah, one of his brothers, Judah, said, let's don't kill him. Let's sell him. They sold him for, uh, I believe, eight ounces of silver. He ended up uh, with the Midianites. They sold him to Potiphar. Potiphar has him in his house. Amen. We're moving toward Egypt. Potiphar has a wife. She makes a move on David. Uh, David leaves his coat there, takes off running. Again, we're talking about a 17-year-old boy. Amen. But he's got a heart after God. The Scripture says when his master heard the story, because she went and said, hey, this boy made a move on me. She was embarrassed, and his wife told him, saying, this is how your slave treated me. He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him. Put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. I love that. The Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. Again, this is another detour in Joseph's life. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care. Because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Several goals this morning. The first goal here is to help believers understand that some detours are God sanctioned and some are self made. Some detours we make ourselves and some detours are God sanctioned. Second, here, the second goal here is to empower believers as they journey through their own detours by giving them four proofs of determining is this from God? Amen. So we're going to look at this. Go back to the first one again. Marie's trying to take a, a snapshot. Amen. We want to help her out this morning. The first goal is to help believers understand some detours are God's sanctions, some are self-made. Now, in understanding this, catch this. Joseph's detour, his first one, was self-made. All he had to do was keep his mouth shut. Amen. But because he opened his mouth, now this thing is it's, it's expediting. It's going to speed up. And he's thrown into a pit. And next thing you know, we see detour, detour. Remember this statement. If it's not God sent, it's God used. Amen. And God didn't send it at that moment. I believe God had a plan for Joseph. But Joseph, he sped it up a little bit faster than what God had intended by opening his mouth. Father, I thank you for the word of God. I ask your anointing to be on my lips. Our hearts, Lord, to receive, to grasp this. I know this has been something that's been on the mind of every believer here. Why did I have to take this detour? Why was that roadblock there? What happened? Why was that pothole? 
And God, you did not come here to make us comfortable, but you came here to change our character. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Whatever started Joseph down the path that seemed to have nothing to do with the dreams of greatness or destiny, God remained committed to preparing him for what was important. Amen. The work that he had set up for him, which would actually be 13 years. I'm going to say 13 years. 13 years later, that's a lot of detours to get to what you had planned. So God allows us to go on detours and always with a purpose. So how do we know that it's God's sanction? So I want to give you some ideas. First here, the first way you know that you're on God's detour is that you're being persecuted for right or righteousness. You were doing something right and something happened. When we read this story, Joseph went to prison not because he did something wrong, he stood up what was right. His master heard the story about his, what his wife said. His wife was lying. Amen. But no, no husband's going to say that to his wife. So he believed her. This is how your slave treated me. Amen. Then the situation when Potiphar's wife became too much to bear, he fled. He ran from the temptation. And because of this, the accusations against him, he ended up in prison. Amen. Even though he was innocent. If you've never experienced ne negative repercussions because of your faith, you probably aren't a believer or not a good believer. Eventually, because you stand for God, somebody's going to say something. There's going to be some negative come at you, oftentimes from family. Amen. They don't understand why you're standing, why you, why you ain't drinking with them on Saturday, why you ain't partying, why you quit this, why your language cleaned up. Amen. Why you're not doing certain things. They, what, what, what's the matter with you? And all of a sudden, the repercussions start. Now, this hit me as I'm reading this. I, I mentioned this again to my pastor this morning. He said, son, you own to something. When you read the story of Daniel, Daniel was a man who was made into a eunuch as a young fellow, which means his opportunity from reproduction has been taken away. He's in exile. He's been uh, kidnapped, if you would. He's in a place called Babylon. And there the Scripture says that he would pray to God three times a day. During that time of praying, watch this, verse 6 of Daniel chapter 6, so these administrators and satraps went as a group to the king and said, may King Darius live forever. I call them suck-ups. Are y'all familiar with political suck-ups? Amen. As a matter of fact, would you look, Daniel's den and the mandate. This decree was a mandate. And I've heard that word more the last two years, mandating, mandating, man. And people wanting to mandate and take away freedoms out of your life. Listen, guys, this preacher's not going to stand against you getting jabbed, or unjab, mask, or unmask, stay home. Evidently, y'all decided to come to church. Amen. But whatever you want to do. But I don't listen to mandates. Amen. And so here's Daniel. He's got a mandate against him. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, governors, and other suck-ups have all agreed that the king should issue an edict, a mandate, and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or human being during the next 30 days, except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, this sounds good. I mean, Darius hears this. It pumps up his ego. You mean everybody's for this? Oh, everybody's for this. Now, who wasn't? Daniel. Daniel, because it was against his beliefs and what he believed in. And why does it bother people that I pray? Why does it bother people that I say in the name of Jesus? Why does it affect you so much that I want to live my life for what is right and not what is wrong? It does. How many notice that? It bothers people that you were vaxxed. It bothers people that you were unvaxxed. It bothers people that you mask up. It bothers people that you were unmasked. And again, I'm not, play, I'm not playing either side. As a matter of fact, I don't even tell people whether that is or isn't. How many know it's none of their business? Amen. It, 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 this thing has gotten so mysterious and, and messed up. And, uh, you know, and again, I, I hear stories on all sides. And i got to tell you, you've got to have faith to move through this detours that this nation and this world has been on the last two years. You've got to have faith in everything that you do, amen, and believe in God that what you're going to do is going to take care of you, amen. No matter how, how you go here, you're going to have to believe God, amen. I, I believe that. Somebody said, well, if I take that shot, it can make me sick. Well, you've got to believe God you won't get sick, amen. Well, if I don't take that shot, I'll get sick. Well, you've got to believe God you won't get sick. Well, what, what if I take it and, and, and I still pass away? Well, you better thank God. I'm telling you, the longer we're afraid of death, scared of dying, we will quit living. So you've got to get into a place in your life and help other people get into a place in their life. I'm going to keep living. 
So Daniel said, uh, they, they, they brought it to him and said, hey, if anybody does. So they, they waited till Daniel prayed. They set him up. It was a trap. They knew he was going to pray. So Daniel, he begins to pray, and they went to King Darius and said, hey, king, remember that mandate you signed? King, look, that Daniel, he keeps falling on his knees. We caught him, got him on video right here on my iPhone. Amen. He bowing. He's praying to his God. He's not praying to you. So verse 16 says, so the king gave the order. He had no choice. He was living between a rock and a hard place. That's where all of us are right now. Amen. And they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. And the king said to Daniel, and I love the king. He said to Daniel, may your God whom you serve continually rescue you. Amen. I know you've been praying. I know the mandates toward me that I'm supposed to be the most powerful. But evidently, you don't believe that. You believe there's a higher power. So I pray he rescues you. Amen. A stone was brought, placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and the rings of his nobles so that Daniel's situation might not change. Verse 18, then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating, without any TV, Netflix, entertainment being brought to him, he couldn't sleep. He just couldn't sleep. At the first light of dawn, who's the first one at the den? It's the king. King rushes up there real fast. Verse 20, when he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to rescue you from the lions? When I read this, I, read, I understand this. There are a lot of mandates that have been put out that a lot of people are not for who had to go along with it. They, he didn't, he didn't, it was his own man, but he didn't want to go along with it, but he got suckered into it. He got between a rock and a hard place. Yes, and so he's yelling, Daniel! And listen, the den wasn't something you walked in. The den was something you were dropped in. So he goes to the top of the den. He yells down inside there, Daniel! Is your God whom you serve continually? Somebody say Monday. Continually, somebody say Tuesday. Continually, somebody say Wednesday. Continually, continually. Man, I love a smart church. Amen. So he starts yelling down in there, and I love a Daniel's response when he yells back at the king. Hallelujah. When he goes to that, he yells and he says to him, what verse are you in, Pastor? Thank you. Amen. Daniel answered, may the king live forever. Oh, that's good. My God has sent his angel. He shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. Verse 23, the king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. When Daniel was lifted from the den, they searched him, checked him. No wound was found on him because he trusted in his God. At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and their children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions crushed all of their bones. That means the lions were hungry, but they couldn't eat Daniel. Amen. But everybody else that went in, and those guys who signed that paperwork affected their wives and their children. Amen. And all of them were killed. Then the king Darius wrote to all the nations and peoples of every language and all the earth. He sent out an email. May you, may you prosper greatly. I issue a decree, a mandate. I'm going to give you another mandate. This is a mandate I've been waiting on. That in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. Now, that's a mandate, my friend. Hallelujah. That's what we're looking for. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Again, when you go through persecution for right's sake, amen, understand this, you're probably on a detour. Amen. It's going to happen to you. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 22, you'll be hated by all because of my name. Again, in Matthew 24, 9, Jesus tells his disciples, when they will deliver you to tribulation, then they're going to kill you. And you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Philippians 1, 29, Paul says to the church there, for to you it has been granted for Christ's sake, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. And I know that many of our gospel preachers tell us that life should be nice and rosy and wonderful and kind, 
I have not found it to be that way. I have found that when you stand for what is right, oftentimes people don't like you. Amen. They'll say malicious things about you. And the great thing about living in 2022 is there's a lot of good ways and bad ways they can say things about you that you can't defend yourself. Mm. Second, the second way you know you're on God's detour is that in the midst of persecution, God reveals his presence to you. It's like right here where I'm at, I know God just showed up. Hallelujah. Amen. As he was in prison, Genesis 39, 21, the Lord was with Joseph and extended kindness. The word kindness in the Hebrew language is the word grace. He extended grace to him. Amen. He blessed him with grace. He found favor. The other word there for grace, favor. Amen. With the chief jailer who gave him the responsibility to be in charge of all the other prisoners. The same jailer never micromanaged Joseph's work. Amen. He released it and let it go. I mentioned this before. The great thing about pastoring this church is I a long time ago quit micromanaging stuff. Amen. There's somebody that cleans this house, I don't check on it. You know, I, literally, I don't. Uh, the swap, I don't ask you guys what you're teaching, what you're preaching. Amen. Uh, the, the lift ladies, amen, all the things. HD praying here on Tuesday night with folks. I don't come in and say, you've got to pray this way, that way. I don't do it. You Sometimes you've got to raise up leaders and turn them loose. Amen. So here's Joseph shows up. Man, he's got, he got God's favor on him. Jailer said, man, it's time for a vacation. I'm going to let him take over. Amen. I'm going I'm to let him deal with this thing. I'm going to let him stay. So God promises to stay with us, not just through detours, but, but through a host of trials and storms. Deuteronomy 31.6 promises, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble at the enemy nation, for the Lord your God is with you who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. This was the word to Moses and the Israelites when they came out. Even though the disciples panicked at a time, you remember in the ship when Jesus got up, amen, he rebuked the waves, and they said, what kind of man is this? But even the waves and the wind listen to him. Isaiah 41.10 reminds us that, God, do not fear, for I'm with you. Do not be anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The third way you know that God's secure is that during your own suffering, God gives you other people who are suffering similarly so that you might minister to them in their need. Have you found it on your detours you meet other people that you never dreamed you'd meet? I often talk about my, my incarceration times for protesting against abortion. I met some of the greatest folk, man. Amen. Whether they were guards or prisoners, but I connected with them. You know, I often mention Carlos Bertigas to you, who Carlos was murdered a few years ago in 610. I met Carlos in church, big Lou Ferrigno-looking guy. Do you know the one question I, I, I never asked Carlos? We were in jail together in Austin. He protected me at one time when I almost got in a fight while I was in jail for preaching the gospel. Amen. A guy got mad at me. But the one question you know I never asked Carlos was, why are you here? I never asked him that. But I gave God thanks he was. Amen. Whatever crime he committed, thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm just glad you put that man in jail with this man right here because that was a good thing. Genesis chapter 40, sometime later, the cupbearer. You know what a cupbearer is? He's a guy that, that would, he drank before the king. So it, it was a hard job. His resume said, will you drink before the king? Check yes or no. He checked yes, he got the job. So he'd drink before the king. If he died, the king didn't drink. What a job. Amen. So that was his job. The other guy was a baker. All he had to do was cook for the king, take care of the king. So sometime later, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their master, the king, the king of Egypt. I, and I, I here last night I'm reading this and I'm pondering, Joseph, how did they offend him? Did they give him sour drink? Did he drink a little something and go, ooh, that's nasty. I think I'll give that to the king. Did, 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 they, did they give him a raw hamburger? I know what it was. He put mustard on his burger. Amen. And offended the king. So the king put him in prison. Pharaoh was angry with these two officials, the chief cupbearer and the, and, the, and the chief baker. And he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the same prison why, where Joseph was confined. So whatever put them there connected them with Joseph. Here's how you know you're on a detour. All of a sudden now you're connected with people that are going through the similar problems. So in the prison, both men were assigned to Joseph. Verse 4 says, the captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, and he attended to them, looked after them. So while in prison, both men had a dream. 
Both men, their dreams had something to do with something on top of their head. And so Joseph looked at him he said, to the cupbearer. He said, in three days, you're going to get out of here. Hey, Amen. You're going to be back taking care of the, uh, of the king. Woo! Then the baker said, hey, hey, I had a dream too. And he saw these things on top of his head. He asked Joseph. He said, Joseph, what about my dream? He said, in three days, you're going to get decapitated. I'm going to ask somebody else about my dream. Three days later, one decapitated, the other put back inside there. Joseph had one thing. He says, when all goes well, he says to the cupbearer, when all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness, show me grace, show me favor. Mention me to the Pharaoh when you get me out of this prison. I was forcibly carried off from the land of the Hebrews, and even here I have done nothing to deserve being put in this dungeon. That is the statement of everybody I knew when I was in jail. I didn't do nothing to be put in here. Okay. God places others in your life who are going through similar struggles. He uses other people and their problems to help you focus on them. You know, and the issue here is now I'm not self I'm selflessness. That's what Joseph was when he answered their dreams and told them what was going on. He wasn't selfish. Philippians 2 out of the message says, then do me a favor. Agree with each other. Love each other. Be deep-spirited, friends. Can you take these verses and use them for this time of this pandemic? to help people out, not to be mean on either side or the other, to learn how to walk in a balance. Amen. Let people be people. Amen. Look at it again. Amen. Do me a favor. Agree with each other. Love each other. Be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. This was the spirit that Joseph had. If we delay, listen to me, if we delay in helping those whom the Lord has placed in our life, we will also be delaying our own destiny. Had he refused to talk, he, he, if he refused to be friends, amen, with the cupbearer, he would have delayed it. Often it's through this selfless ministry that we have been able to provide blessing to others. Finally, God seldom intends for us to travel along, amen, on our detour. I often like to say this, if I'm going through trouble, I hope you're with me. If I'm having a difficult time, would you join me? Amen. If I'm celebrating, would you, would you celebrate with me? Amen. That's what the Scripture teaches us. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. The fourth way, and this is in closing, amen, you know that you are on God's detour, is that as you near the completion of, your, of it, God postpones it. You thought you were at the end. Listen, he said to the cupbearer, what did he say? When you get out, tell Pharaoh about me. Tell Pharaoh about me. Amen. Just mention to him about what, what I'm going through in life. So everything that Joseph interpreted regarding the dreams of the cupbearer and the beggar, that came true. The cupbearer forgot, Genesis 40, 23. But, he, but the head cupbearer never gave Joseph another thought. How many times have you helped somebody? And all of a sudden, they just forgot about you? Amen. So you immediately posted it? Listen, sometimes this detour is going to take a little longer than you thought because God's setting something up. So you got to stay with it, keep pressing on, endure to the end. Watch this. God had a specific reason for postponing Joseph's release from prison, namely the moment of interpreting Pharaoh's dream. In other words, Pharaoh wasn't going to dream until two years later. Genesis 41.1. Two years, two years passed, 24 months. 730 days, 17,520 hours. If you've ever been incarcerated, it goes by slow. Amen. 17,520 hours later, Pharaoh had a dream. He I did spit. Had a dream. He was standing by the Nile River. He saw something about seven years and seven years. Amen. It affected him. So here in verse 9, it says, hey, this is funny. The head cupbearer then spoke up and said to Pharaoh, I just now remembered something. I just, I just now remembered someone. I, I, it just came back to me. You know what he's doing? He's a suck up. Amen. He's trying to connect with, with, with Pharaoh. He said, I'm sorry. I should have told you this a long time ago. Verse 14. Pharaoh at once sent for Joseph. They brought him, watch this, on the run from the jail cell. I see Joseph when that cell opened up. He takes off running. They stopped him by the barber shop. They cut his hair. 
They put clean clothes on him. They made him presentable for the Pharaoh. Amen. When he gets to the Pharaoh, he asked him about it. He said, I dreamed a dream, Pharaoh told Joseph. Nobody can interpret it. But I've heard that just by hearing a dream, you can interpret it. Joseph answered, no, I can't. I can't do it. But God will set Pharaoh's mind at ease. And this is when that detour takes a big change. And he shares with him, we're going to have seven years of great prosperity. We're going to save up uh, probably half of what comes in. Amen. We're going to sparingly live because the next seven years will be drought. Amen. So I'm telling you, and you got to have a lot of faith to believe in that kind of stuff. But he believed in this man because, and the cupbearer agreed, everybody agrees here. Similarly, God intentionally delays the moment of destiny for many of us because he's correcting, he's preparing, and he's maturing us. Amen. When you go through a detour, when you hit a roadblock, understand this. God never left you. He's going to put people in your life to be a blessing to. And in turn, watch this, they will reciprocate the blessing in time. There have been times in my life I have blessed other people. I've done things for them. Amen. And I wonder if anything going to turn around. And years later, it come right back to me. Amen. I forgot all about them. And here it comes again. The blessing shows up. So don't get discouraged. And that goes for every believer here. Listen. After being released from Egyptian bondage, God delayed bringing the Israelites into the promised land to correct them. Paul, the Bible says, was delayed from journeying to Rome. He spent three years in Ephesus. You know what he did while he was in Ephesus? He wrote the book of Romans. Matter of fact, he wrote three letters while he was there. For three years, he just started writing the Bible. The detours caused us to have more of the Bible than we ever had before. Detours were not a bad thing. We also must recognize that in order to live out the specific destiny that the Lord has in store for us, we will likely experience delays and setbacks, which God is going to use to fashion people around us. There is purpose in pain. I brought this little, little weight set here to explain something to you. You know, each week, God willing, I do a little working out. I do it so I can tie my shoes. And I'm I'm serious. I'll be 61 next month, and, and I just get stiffer. And see, like the more I work out, the worse it gets. And I think to myself, no, no, no. If you weren't working out, you couldn't even do this. But here's the, the issue. The purpose of pain. If you go to a gym or anywhere at home and you lift weights, you are experiencing a burden with a purpose. That burden comes with a purpose of building muscle in your life. Amen. But being able to stretch, to be able to move. Amen. It's so important to be able to do that, particularly as you get older. Because when you're young, it just seems like ah, it's not so hard to build. But then you hit a certain place in life where it's just a little tougher. Amen. So this experience is very important. If you have a trainer or, or a partner with you, they help you with lifting of the burden. Amen. But all that has a purpose. If someone took that same weight, you know, if I take it and I, I work out with it or, or I throw it, or I give it to Joseph to work out with. But what if I decided, you know what, I think I, 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 I'm going to take the same weight and I'm going to throw it at David as hard as I can. Well, it's the same weight that brought purpose and blessing in my life. When God puts me on detours, he's building me. He's not hurting me. Amen. He's making me stronger. But if I gave this weight to Satan, same weight, through temptations, he would throw it at me to try to hurt me with it. One pain is to develop you. Another pain is to harm you. God allows trials or temptations in your life of the believer to develop them. And Satan brings trials or temptations into your life to the believer to destroy you. David's, I mean, excuse me, Joseph's life changed when he ran from Potiphar's wife. Amen. Joseph's life changed when he didn't get bitter in the prison when the cupbearer didn't talk about him. Amen. He could have sat there when they called for him and said, Pharaoh's got a dream. Come on in here. Forget Pharaoh. Amen. Daniel, Daniel could have gave in and said, okay, I'm not going to pray. There's a mandate. I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to keep living. I'm not going to keep doing what I've been doing. I'm just going to fall in line with everybody else back here to make all these guys happy for 30 days. But he didn't do it. The weights that God puts on us are to bring purpose in our life and strength. They're not to harm you. Later on, maybe in the next week or two, I'll share with you where Joseph hit a place when he looked at his own brothers and said, what you meant to do was to harm me, was to hurt me. You meant to destroy my life. But what you did to harm me, God used to strengthen me. 
to help me. Amen. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Thank you, Jesus. I could look at you while I'm preaching and tell some of you have been on some very difficult detours. Sickness took you on a detour. Relational breakups took you on a detour. Financial problems took you on a detour. And you wonder, where's God? Let me tell you, he has never left you. If you're a believer, he's never forsaken you. If you've been away from him, wouldn't this be the day that you say, God, you know where I'm at. I need you to work with me, give me wisdom, show me that this detour will someday come to an end, and it's for my benefit. Amen. If I'm talking to you, put your hand up right now. Let me see who I'm talking to right now. Hands in the air. Let me see who I'm talking to. Oh, yeah, I see, I see God moving on some hearts here right now. Those watching online, I don't care when you watch this. I'm telling you that this detour you're on will someday come to an end, and you'll have some smooth roads. But beware. Understand. Don't beware, but just understand. You're going to catch a detour again. Because God has never done developing us. Those hands lifted again. Let me pray with you, Lord Jesus. I ask you to touch, strengthen, and give revelation. Let our minds be open, God, to the fact that you're not against us. You put us down this road for the saving of nations, for the saving of families, for the saving of friends. Lord, you put what I went through in that hospital was to be a blessing to somebody else. What I went through in that jail through addiction was to be a blessing to somebody else. What I went through in life by the loss of a spouse is to be a blessing to somebody else. God, I refuse to get angry. I refuse to be hurt forever. I refuse to be bitter. I release it right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give God praise for detours. Could you do that?